Good morning and welcome to worship. How many people are glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody people glad and not mad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. We're going to open up with that hymn of the church. As you are able, please stand to your feet and lift your voice and sing, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all. Bless his holy, bless his holy, his holy name. One more time, bless the Lord, oh my soul, hey. Great things, hallelujah. He's done great things. He's done great things. Yes, he has. He's done great things. Great things for you. Throw your head back and say, He's done great things. He's done great things. When I think about His goodness, I know He's done great things. He's done great things. is holy come on let's say it bless the Lord oh my soul and all that's within me bless the Lord oh my soul say amen amen the call to worship is found in your program guide and it reads even as the worlds were formed continents name oceans separated and your plan for mankind begin to unfold you had us on your mind thank you gracious lord for including us in your divine plan 
When you decided to perfectly place man in your world, you chose to place him in our motherland. Thank you, gracious Lord, for including us in your divine plan. Throughout the Holy Scripture and throughout our history, we have witnessed your keeping power, and we have been recipients of your love and grace. Thank you, gracious Lord, for including us in your divine plan. We shall ever be mindful of how you have brought us together after the middle passage, delivered us from the chains of slavery, and carried us throughout the civil rights movement. May we always remember your love towards us, O God. We thank you, dear Savior, for the gifts, talents, uniqueness, and cultural blessings you have poured out upon our people. May we always appreciate the blessings you have bestowed upon us, O God. We thank you for our mathematics, scientific, and literary, literary genius. We, have, we thank you, we thank you jazz, gospel, and the blues. We thank you for beautiful locks of hair and beautiful shades and complexions of skin and even for soul food. We thank you for the wisdom, strength, and determination we learned from our ancestors and for the blessings and love of family. Oh God, all together. celebrate the heritage, history, legacy you have given us. We will ask you, O oh Lord, will keep us forever in the path. We pray. Amen. Amen. Won't you turn in your hymnals to hymn 571 as we open Black History Month. Let us sing, lift every voice and sing, to earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Without any further aligning, let us sing all three stanzas to the glory of God. Hymn 571.
God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Gracious God of our ancestors, we come to you this morning knowing that you have already brought us far along the way, God. And we come here on this first Sunday of February, reflecting on how you have been good to us, how you have been good to our families, how you have been good to those who came before us, God. God, God, we wanna say thank you. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for keeping our people, God. Thank you for giving us a hope in a time of hopelessness, God. Thank you for helping us keep our eyes on you when things were looking bleak, God. God, thank you for how far you have brought us from, God. So as we sing, lift every voice and sing every first Sunday of February, God, it helps us to remember that you are the same God of the past, and you are the same God in the present, and you will be the same God in the future. So God, we come to you bringing all that we have on us, God. All that might be worrying us, God. All the burdens that we might have on us, God. We bring it to you, God, because our grandparents told us that you are a heavy load sharer, God. Our grandparents told us that you are a bomb in Gilead, God. Our grandparents told us that you are Rapha, God. So God, we come to you knowing that you have all power in your hands, God. And that we know that with anything that we might be facing right now, God, that we can leave it on the altar, God. Because we know that you can do all things, God. That you have all power in your hands, God. And that even if we might be anxious right now, God, that you, God, got this. God, we know that you got us. And for those who might be dealing with grief and bereavement, God, God, we know that you are a comforter, that you will be us even in the midnight hour when we are tearful, God. So God, those who are, those who are in the time of grief, God, may you be with them, God. May we as a church community circle around them, God. We give a special prayer to Brother Darrell Williams, whose mother passed away, God. God, may you be with the Williams family and with any other family going through similarities, God. God, we also pray for those who are dealing with ongoing sickness, God. Those who are dealing with illnesses, God. God, may you be with them and be present with them when they are in the doctor's room, God. May you be with them and present when they are in the OR, God. We, God, that you will surround them with your angels of protection so that you will, they will know that you are with them and you will never forsake them, God. God, God, we are here bringing everything to you because we have seen you done it before, God. And we know that because our grandmothers and our grandfathers have faith that we can have the same faith, God, because we know that you kept them, God. So anything that is on our heart today, God, any prayer that has not been shared out loud, God, you know what's in our hearts, God. And may you meet us in our need of prayer, God. Hear our prayer, oh Lord. Whatever we are in need of, God, God, heal us, God. God, protect us, God. God, strengthen us, God. God, continue to develop us in a relationship with you, God. Strengthen who we are in you, God. Because as we go forth into this future as individuals, as we go forth into this future as a community God may we rest ourselves in you knowing that you got this and with any enemy around the corner tries to come against us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper God we know that you got us and you got this this is our prayer in Jesus name and let us all say together amen and amen, and amen.
willing to just call his name this morning. Oh. As we begin the first Sunday of Black History Month, one thing we know for sure, that God has been faithful to us as a people. Because no matter what we've been experiencing, God has always been there. Do I have a witness? Has he kept us? Has he brought us a mighty long way? So we thank God for his faithfulness, and we celebrate him today.
to make sure you get the words to this song. It says, I'm reaping the harvest that God promised me. And I'm taking back what the devil stole from me. Oh, I know I got some witnesses to that this morning. And I'll rejoice today. Today. For I shall recover it all. Now that was where you shout at, right there. Because I shall recover it all. Is that our testimony this morning? Are we going to reap? Are we going to recover? And are we going to rejoice? I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we're going to do today. Because God's been too good, too kind, and too faithful. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me, and I'll rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Yes, I'll rejoice today. For I shall reap. Can you sing it with us now? I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back. I'm reaping. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back. Take back what the devil stole from me. I'm reaping. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back. Take back what the devil stole from me. And now we join. Point to yourself. I shall recover. Somebody just wants to stand up and declare that God is faithful. 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 If he's been faithful to you, stand on your feet just for a couple of seconds. Faithful. Faithful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give God some praise. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. If you don't come to church but for one thing, it's to give God some thanks and praise for God's faithfulness and for God doing things that we didn't even ask for, such as giving us our next breath. Amen? Amen. It's a wonderful joy and pleasure to welcome you on this Sunday, the first Sunday of February, as we commemorate Black History Month. Amen. One of the favorite months here at St. James. And we're so excited uh, to be in this month of February. If we have any first time visitors, we invite you to stand at this time. Any first time visitors, if you could please stand at this time so we may welcome you. Um, any first time visitors. Let's give God praise for all of our visitors. Amen. A warm welcome. Everybody say welcome. Welcome, welcome here at St. James. Uh, we are so glad that you are here. Uh, we ask that before you leave that you'll fill out a visitor's card so we may formally acknowledge your presence here. And if you already have a church home, we invite you to send our love back to that church home. But if you are looking for a church home, you have found your home here. And we want to say welcome home. Amen. And also for our uh, virtual congregation, any first time visitors there, to let us know where you're worshiping uh, from in our chat so that our virtual ministry will be able to also welcome you in that space. Let's give God praise for our virtual congregation. Amen. Just a few announcements going forth. Uh, next Saturday, uh, we will be having at 10 a.m. our leadership training. Uh, so all officers, ministry leaders, um, members, clergy, anyone uh, who's involved in ministry, we encourage you to come to the fellowship hall next Saturday the 10th at 10 a.m. in person. Uh, well, we will be continuing um, in our leadership training. And then next Sunday is the Super Bowl, and uh, not just for those who like the NFL, but, but what the youth of our church do, the YPD, the Young People's Department, uh, they have Super Sunday as an S-O-U-P, Super uh, Sunday Super Bowl of Caring. And so what that means that after church, um, they will be uh, selling uh, soup, <laughs> uh, so we ask that you encourage uh, you will be encouraged to go downstairs and support that fundraiser all the proceeds um, go against uh, to fight against hunger and support uh, the St. James food pantry that we hit we have here right here that's every Wednesday our uh, food pantry is operated in the building behind this building and so part of those proceeds go to continue that work in ministry and also uh, continue to teach our youth how to give back and how to care about others and then going into uh, the week of uh, the following week which will be uh, February the 14th on Valentine's Day that's also Ash Wednesday <laughs> Um, and so we will have a in-person noon service for those who are available. Um, and then throughout the day from 10 to 3, uh, Reverend Craig Robinson will be giving ashes. Um, so if you would like to come between 10 and 3 or the service at noon, you are definitely welcome to come on that Valentine's Day. Amen. And uh, we um, have one other announcement, then our Pew Rally Committee will be coming up shortly. Um, our ushers are traveling to Indiana for their fundraiser to see Jesus of Nazareth um, on March 9th. So if you are interested in going on that trip, please see uh, any, any usher uh, for that fundraiser. Um, at this time, we have our Pew Rally Committee chairs uh, to please come up. Um, so that they can do their special announcement, our Pew Rally Committee chairs. Let's give God praise for them. Amen, amen. Good morning, St. James. Good morning. Good morning. So last week, Robert and I announced the very first mini challenge. So does anybody know what that challenge is? Do you remember? 
Great, the puzzle challenge. So, St. James, did you bring your puzzle solving skills with you today? Yes. Yeah, no? <laughs> yeah? There we go. We got a couple over here. Okay. Let's go. Well, good, because you're going to need them this afternoon. Your teams will come together to solve a puzzle. Now, these puzzles contain a hidden message within its pieces, and your team will have to decipher that message without putting the pieces together. So this challenge is timed. So if you'd like to participate, please meet us at your team tables in the fellowship hall immediately following the morning service. This week's winners will be announced next week during the morning announcements. So let me try this again. Team Yellow, yeah. are we ready for the challenge this yeah. afternoon? <laughs> Good. What about Team Green? Are you ready to take this victory today? Yeah. <laughs> I see y'all, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, that's more like it. So I'm so glad to see that everyone has accepted this challenge. So for next week's whoa, challenge. Whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, sweetie. <laughs> I have a poem I like to recite. Okay. Pray team, y'all give me a hand? Yeah. All right. Roses are red. Yeah. Come on now, y'all hear me. Roses are red. Yeah. All right. yeah. Violets are blue. I actually didn't know that, but okay. All right. Team Green and I are ready to accept this next challenge. What about all of you? All right. All right. All right. All right. Got something for you, sweet holy. Oh. <laughs> what y'all think? So in the spirit of love, during the week of Valentine's Day, we would like to present you with a Valentine's Day mini challenge. So for this challenge, your teams will be presented with the Valentine's Day riddle, okay? And the team that solves the riddle correctly will win. Now this particular challenge is gonna take place before the morning service. So if you'd like to participate, please meet us at the table in the front entrance of the church, and there you will be able to read the riddle and submit your answer for the challenge. We'd also like to inform you that we have created a team spirit table, and that table is located outside of this sanctuary in the annex. So if you'd like to show some team spirit during the service in the morning announcements, we encourage you to stop by that table and pick up a prop on your way in. We just kindly ask that you return the props after service so that we can continue to share them for the remainder of the month. And remember, pre-rally Sunday is February 24th, and the theme of this pre-rally, 25th. Apologies. 25th. <laughs> See, she keeps me in check, y'all. That's why I love her. <laughs> Amen. Remember, the theme of this challenge is, of this pre round is challenge accepted. So we encourage you all to invite your guests to fill the pews for an unforgettable worship experience. And we would also like you to, you and your guests, to wear your respective team colors. Thank you all. We can't wait to see you downstairs. God bless. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Robert, Sister Fallon. Our Pew Rowley uh, co-chairs, we are so excited. And as part of that, every year we do a sacrificial offering of $50, which goes towards our um, AME assessment. And so if you can uh, keep that in mind. And so as we go forth, we are moving forward in worship. Uh, we are going to our worship through giving, because this is an opportunity to continue in our worship through giving. God has given us so much, and God only asks for us to give 10% of what God has given us, which is called the tithe. And then the offering is whatever we give on top of that. So at this time, we have multiple ways to give. You can give through our electronic giving. There is a QR code in your bulletin. If you're worshiping with us virtually, there is a QR QR code on the screen uh, to bring you to our electronic uh, giving pages. If you would like to give through an envelope and need an envelope, you can raise your hand so that our ushers may serve you. And if you are giving through an envelope, we ask that you will send your offerings towards the middle aisle so that the ushers may receive them. Let us pray over all gifts. 
Gracious God, we thank you for everything that you have given us. Uh, we thank you how you have provided for our households and provided for our families, God. And we pray that as we give these gifts back to you, God, that you will multiply them, that, that they will be used uh, to bless the kingdom, God, to bless the community, God. And God, that you will bless every single household here under the sound of my voice, that you will meet them in their needs. This we pray in Jesus' name, and let us all say together, amen. Amen. Okay. And if anyone's driving a blue cruise Chevy, your lights are on. Amen. God the praise. We're going to take you back just a little bit this morning uh, and do an arrangement that we do here at St. James of Amazing Grace. Uh. <laughs>
Praise the Lord for grace. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh. God's grace is amazing. Let's sing a little bit more of that. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. There's something about God's grace, and it is amazing. God's grace will catch you when you fall. God's grace will follow you and never leave you. God's grace will find you. That's the power of God's grace. Hallelujah. Certainly we want to also extend another welcome to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who are visiting with us this morning. You are most welcome here. We, um, before I begin, I want Reverend Ann Barton to wave her hand. Come on, Reverend Barton, wave your hand this morning. <laughs> Reverend Barton, Reverend Barton uh, was recently honored as one of 35 uh, preaching women by the Urban League. Amen. Come on, we could show some more love. We could do better than that for Reverend Ann Barton. Amen. And she's still preaching. Now, I always get her age wrong, but she's over 100 and she's still preaching. Amen. I think she was out preaching last Sunday or something. But, uh, and, and, and she has been a fire powerhouse preacher 
since, she, since, since the beginning, amen. And I remember as a child hearing that powerful voice uh, when Reverend Barton would preach or, do, or pray or do anything at St. James when she was here. And so we're so blessed to have someone like Reverend Barton as a part of our congregation. And we thank God for you, my sister in Christ. It's preaching time. And there's a word from the Lord this morning. Um, sorry, Reverend Cannon, we were supposed to have you read the scripture. But, <laughs> but there is a word from the Lord found in the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Philippians chapter 4. Where I will read in your hearing verses 10 through 20. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. When you've got it, say, I got it. If you need some more time, say, hold up, Pastor. All right. Philippians chapter 4. Verses 10 through 20, listen for the word of the Lord. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good for you to share in the, my troubles, moreover, as you Philippians know in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts, what I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough, I am amply supplied now that I have received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God, and my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in, of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. It was by your amazing grace that we are standing and sitting here today. Your grace is amazing. Your grace is sufficient. Your grace is all we need. And so now, God, as we search your, the riches of your word, we ask that words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, someone needs a word today. Someone needs to hear from you today. Someone who is carrying a heavy burden. Someone who is loaded down with grief. Someone needs to know that you are with us. And so, God, we're asking for you to heal and set us free through your word. We are not worthy that you should come under this roof, but speak the words, and your servants will be healed. We're listening, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
verse 13 is where I want to set our sermonic spotlight as we consider our theme for the month of February, Challenge Accepted. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I want to encourage your hearts this morning with the subject, hang on in there. Hang on in there. As I already stated, February's theme, as we make our way to Pew Rally, is challenge accepted. As we focus on rising to the challenge of evangelism and promoting the ministry of St. James AME Church, which will culminate in our attendance challenge on Pew Rally Sunday. With the changing cultural winds and the fact that church no longer occupies the top of people's minds, this is not an easy challenge to meet. But if truth is told this morning, very few things in life will ever come easy. Amen. You can't push the easy button. Do I have any company in the building? Sister Pat, Jesus warned us in the Gospel of John that in this life, you're going to have trouble. And if I was a betting man, I would wager that every soul in this sanctuary or watching online has at some point seen some trouble. You've seen your share of trouble. You've You've faced your share of obstacles. You have fought your share of giants and shouted down your share of impenetrable walls. Life, Reverend Jones, is challenging on a good day. Am I right about it? But isn't it amazing when we look back over our lives and think things over, we recognize that everything we, we have survived so much and still managed to thrive. At the dawn of another Black History Month, my favorite month of the year, amen. I can't help but stand in awe of our ancestors who endured hardship endured slave ships, endured racism, endured unequal opportunity, endured displacement, migrated from the South. They left Georgia and Alabama and Arkansas and Louisiana and Mississippi and made lives, new and better lives for themselves in Chicago and New York and St. Louis and Boston and Columbus and Cleveland and Milwaukee and Indianapolis and Detroit. Detroit. They marched for civil rights and voting rights, things that we have in modern times taken for granted and which are now slowly but surely being reversed or outright taken away. They, the, our ancestors, our, our forebearers, they engaged in nonviolent social action. They stood toe to toe with racist politicians and even more racist policies and, and the walls of injustice came tumbling down and even today Heroes and sheroes whom history books have yet to recognize are calling the nation to be better and to do better. I can't help but praise God and sing for every mountain you brought me over. For every trial you see me through for every blessing. Hallelujah. For this, I give you praise. Yes, God is a keeper. God is a way maker. God is a rock in a weary land and a shelter in the time of storm. And, and I bet I can find at least 10 witnesses who can testify that God, despite the trouble and despite the pain and despite the challenges, and there are many, is keeping me alive. 
Therefore, I have an obligation to God, to our ancestors, to my family, to rise when the occasion presents itself and accept the challenges as they come and hang on in there until victory is won. That, that, that was Paul's message to the church. The church at Philippi and the modern church, you and me, as we face the challenges of life. Paul wrote this letter to encourage the church, the people of God then and now, to hang in there even when the circumstances seemed impossible to overcome. And I know what you're thinking. Paul does not know what I'm going through. Paul does not have to face the hell I face every day. And you're right. Paul doesn't know all about your trouble. But Paul didn't know a thing or two about trouble in general. As Dr. Marcus D. Cosby aptly observed, Paul was a graduate with honors from the school of hard knocks. Ever since that fateful moment on the road to Damascus outlined in Acts chapter 9, when God knocked Paul off of his horse on his way to kill Christians, he called Paul and to ministry, and Paul lived the agony and the ecstasy of discipleship. Yeah, being a disciple can be an agonizing experience sometimes because God is always stretching us and shaping us and growing us into better people, better men, better women, better children. If truth is told, personal growth can be and is painful. It's called growing pains for a reason. I'm growing. I'm trying something different with my life. I'm trying not to be so mean when I get upset. I'm growing. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to be more forgiving and more loving and more patient and kind. I'm, I'm growing. I'm, 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 I, I, and it hurts. That's, that's the agony of discipleship. But there, but there is also an ecstasy of discipleship. There is a euphoria, a sense of joy, unspeakable joy that comes from knowing Jesus for myself. Am I right about it? Yeah, Jesus has changed my whole life. Hallelujah. Since I made Jesus my choice, some of the stuff that had me burdened and down can't hold me down anymore. Since Jesus came into my life, I don't live in fear, but I thrive in faith. Since I met Jesus, my burdens are lighter and I have peace in my soul. Do I have any company in the building? Paul had lived the agony and the ecstasy of the discipleship call. And at the time he wrote this letter to the Philippians, Paul was in a season of agony. Paul was in prison. But I have to say this, Paul might have been in prison, but he was not imprisoned. This is to say there were chains on his body, Reverend Barton. He was confined. He had no control over his movement. Somebody told him when to wake up. Somebody told him when to go to bed. Somebody determined when he would eat and exercise. Paul was in prison, but, but his heart and his mind and his soul were free. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. The circumstances you find yourself in, the stuff that is going on around you, cannot and must not define how you feel on the inside. Paul was in chains. But his heart and his soul and his mind were free. And that's why he could say in chapter 3, I rejoice. For I know through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out to my salvation. For me, living is Christ and dying is gain. And, and then he can turn around in the beginning of chapter 4 and say, rejoice in the Lord. Uh, 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 and again, I say, rejoice. 
Let your gentleness be known to all, for the Lord is near. When you are free in Jesus Christ, you can stand some stuff you didn't know that you could stand. Do I have any company in the building? Just hang on in there. That was Paul's message. Hang in there. I know there's some tension in the church, but hang on in there. I know there is some anxiety about what's going on in society, but hang on then there. I know life ain't been no crystal stair, and by now you have stepped on one too many tacks in the floor, but hang on in there. I know, brother, sister, mom, dad, I know that you're weary, but hang in there. But, but Pastor Paul, here's my question. What's the secret? What's the formula? How have you managed to hang in there despite the challenges? And Pastor Paul gave me three strategies to help us hold on. And the first strategy is to find a good team. Find some good teammates. First and foremost, you have to mind the company you keep. Paul said, I rejoice, verse 10, in the Lord greatly that now at least you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me but had no opportunity to show it. Paul, in this letter, also acknowledges the love, care, and concern of the members of the Philippian church. In fact, the church at Philippi was renowned for their hospitality and their generosity. When Paul was on his missionary journeys all around the world, it was the Philippians who were insistent on sending Paul gifts for aid to help him in his work. And, and it reminds me of a conversation we had two weeks ago in our Purpose Driven Life Bible study discussion on purpose. And, and Rick Warren asserts that we are formed for God's family. In other words, we were created to be in community with one another. Amen. Because here it is, I need help on this Christian journey. I don't know about you, but I need some help running this Christian race. Discipleship is not, I repeat, is not a solo experience. We need church more than ever. In a time when people are reporting to be more isolated and more lonely, social media and apps and a host of other barriers keep us from being connected with each other, I say we need to connect with the church. If for no other reason, so that you can have some partners who are praying for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you, and I need you to survive. You ever wonder how you made it? Uh, through all these trials and tribulations that you face, you wonder how things worked out when it looked like it was impossible. You had somebody praying for you. I, you wonder how you did not end up in the mess that you were walking barreling towards, it's because you had a grandmother or a mother or somebody who prayed for you, had you on their mind, took the time to pray for you, and I'm so glad they prayed. I need somebody in my life who's praying. I need somebody in my life who's positive. Somebody, somebody ought to say positive who is trusting God for greater for themselves and for me, who is speaking words of life and truth and love, who isn't bringing drama. Do I have any company in the building? And I'm afraid that some of us like drama. But you need to check your circle. Amen. Do I have a witness in the house? Some of us like drama too much. 
just look down. Just look down. You need to check your circle and see if, they're, if the people in your circle are bringing you peace. And if you can't find any peace, you need a new circle. I need someone who's praying. I need someone who's positive. I need companions on this journey who will persevere. The Philippians did not give up in raising their support for Paul. They were determined to help Paul in any way that they could. And out of their financial deficit, they still sacrificed and made it work. Discipleship might ask us to dig a little deeper. Christian fellowship might ask us to go the extra mile so that someone on this journey who is struggling can know that he or she is not running this Christian race by themselves. That is what it is to be the church. At its best, we gather not just to have service and to shout and see what each other has on. We're here to support one another as we try to live out our faith. TLC asked the question in their 1995 single, what about your friends? And I want every young person listening to hear me when I say your friends should be building you up and not tearing you down. They should be pushing you to be better and not pulling you backwards towards worse. What about your friends? Bad company corrupts good character. The secret to holding on is being part of a good team. Additionally, the secret sauce to help us hold on is to recognize the source of your satisfaction. Nudge your neighbor and tell him, just be satisfied. Just be satisfied. For I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. As I said earlier, Paul knew both the agony and the ecstasy of the disciples' life. He's been on top of the world, everything going right. Money was there, food was in abundance. He, he knew the favor of the Lord, but, but he also knew what it meant to be hungry. He knew what it meant to have to survive. He knew the downside of ministry where people don't understand you and treat you mean. He had a deep appreciation, however, for both the ups and the downs, because he knew that regardless of the situation, God's grace, his amazing grace, was sufficient. And so he was able to find peace wherever he was, even in a prison cell, because God never left him alone. And church, that's where I'm trying to get in my own walk with Jesus. I'm trying, with God's help, to get to the place where in good times and not so good times, I'm still all right. My, my, because my mind is grounded and my heart is rooted and my soul is anchored in the blessed assurance that God has not left me or forsaken me and that God is going to see me through this. Because God is the source of my satisfaction, my peace of mind. God is my hope. God is my joy. It's not pr my, my, my peace and my hope and my joy are not predicated on how much money I have or who I'm in a relationship with in this world. It, it's not contingent on the size of my bank account and the car that I drive and the clubs that I belong to or the networks in my phone. I'm content because God's grace is sufficient. And I know that trouble won't last always. 
And I know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Paul had inner peace. Paul had inner joy. Had, uh, Paul had something within that holds the rain and something within that banishes pain and something within him that he could not explain, but he knew there was something. that the world could not give him. And the world couldn't take it away because he had the assurance that nothing could separate him from the love of Jesus, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, not height, nor debt, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. He was content content in whatever state because he had Jesus. And when you are in that spiritual place, you can testify like Andre Crouch, I thank God for my mountains. And I thank God for my valleys. And I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I said, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve it. And I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Yeah. To hold on just a while, little while longer. You need a good team. You need a good crew who's praying for you and pushing you to do better and to be better. Moreover, Press on toward that prize of the high call. You have to find contentment and peace and satisfaction with life on the inside, regardless of what's going on on the outside and the things you can't control. And finally, when the challenges seem impossible, and the walls seem too high, and the mountains don't seem to be able to tunnel through them, and the rivers seem uncrossable. As I prepare to take my seat and bid you a good afternoon, I want you to remember that you have something else in your arsenal. You have Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Which is to say, I can face whatever comes my way because I'm connected to the one who has all power in his hand and he shares that power with me. I can do all things through Christ, which means I need to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. I need to know him as my personal Lord and Savior. I need to sit at Jesus' feet and learn from him. If I'm going to have any chance of get it going the distance or reaching the goal, I need to be connected with Jesus. Jesus is the power source. Jesus is my inspiration. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Jesus is the center of my joy. Jesus, angels bow before him and heaven and earth adore him. I need Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, I need Jesus. You need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need him every hour. I need Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And is there anybody in here who can testify like Paul that if it had not been for Jesus working on the inside of you, you, would be, you wouldn't be at the place you are right now because Jesus found you when you needed him the most. Jesus picked you up and turned you around and gave you purpose and revealed his plan. 
and showed you a better way to live. If Jesus wasn't in my life, uh, I don't know if I could stand some of the stuff I've been through. I might still be crying after my loved one passed away. If Jesus wasn't in my life, I might still be angry, just mad at the world. If Jesus hadn't come and soothed my soul, I might still be hurting after my friends and loved ones disappointed me. But Jesus' love healed my broken heart. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Stop telling yourself that you can't do it. Stop talking yourself out of your blessings. Stop diminishing your shine and your ability. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. I am a new creature in Christ. I'm free and I have power. Yeah! 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 Life will get challenging. Life will throw you a curveball sometimes. An unexpected illness. A bill you didn't know you owed. A situation that seems impossible. All while you are trying to live out your purpose. But give your neighbor a high five. I say give your neighbor a high five and tell him hang on in there. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Hang on in there. Joy is coming in the morning. Hang on in there. It's going to be all right. Hang on in there. God's going to turn it around. Hang on in there. Because surely, goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. Hang on in there. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Hang on in there. Because surely you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hang on in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on in there. Because you never walk alone. You know where I'm going with this. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark at the end of the storm there's a golden golden sky and the sweet silver song of the lark walk on walk on with a hope in your heart and you'll never 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 walk alone say yeah say yeah say The lightning flashing, and I've heard the thunder roll. I felt the sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on, to pray on, to keep running, to keep trying. I heard. The voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. He promised. I said he promised. 
I said he promised. He promised. He promised. He promised. Yeah. Yeah. He promised. Never to leave me alone. Won't you stand all over the church? Hang on in there. I don't feel no I've come too far from where Nobody told me Nobody told me The road would be but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave. Is that anybody's testimony this morning? Is that your testimony? I don't believe. I don't feel no Oh, I've come too far from where I've stopped. Nobody told me. Nobody told me that the road. Would be oh, I don't believe he brought me this far. The doors of the church are open. That's 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 where that's where we're going. We're trying to get to that space where we can say with confidence, I know the road's not easy, but I don't believe that God's gonna bring me here just to leave me alone. Hallelujah! I'm a witness. What God has, the good work that God started, God's gonna bring to completion. If you're here and you're ready to hang on in there just a little while longer, but you need some help, you need some spiritual help, you need the help of Jesus Christ and need the help of a caring and loving church community so that you can keep going. So that you can keep striving. So that you can keep trying. God bless you. another who's ready to keep keep trying stay right there who's ready to keep striving who wants to have a relationship with Jesus Christ to know him as your savior if you're here and you need a church home where there's going to be people that are praying and I'm here to tell you St. James is a praying church if you got a problem, somebody here in St. James is gonna pray for you. Do I have any witnesses in the house? This is a place where you know you can get love and, 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 and support. I'm a witness, and there are several other witnesses who know about the love and generosity of the people in this congregation. If you're here and you wanna connect yourself, with St. James, you want to connect yourself with Jesus. Won't you come as we sing some more? I don't, I don't, no ways. I come too far. There's still time, there's still time. 
Nobody told me. Nobody told me that the road I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe. I don't believe it. Hallelujah. I don't believe he brought me this far. I don't believe. Come on, somebody sing it. I don't believe. I don't believe. Put your hands together and praise the Lord. Amen. Now, you may be you may be seated. To God be the glory. Now, I thought that uh, I thought Sister Mary was already a member of St. Jan. You know, this part of the Browns and Strickland clan that. Uh, they're a big family in this church, but Sister Mary is joining St. James today. Come on, let's praise the Lord. So this is Mary White, and we are so glad that you have united your fellowship here at St. James. You're already a part of the family. Amen. You've been a part of this family for a long time, but you're making it formal. You're making it official. And for that, we say to God, be the glory. Amen. Amen. And so the whole family is up here. And, 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 and come on, uh, and Cheryl's up there. Everybody's here to let you know that you aren't in this by yourself. You are, you are part of a, a great family of faith. And you know the power of prayer, and you know that there are people in this congregation that are praying for you. And so um, I know we, uh, we usually appoint, assign a class leader beforehand, but who, who Walter, you're the class, you, you the family class leader, right? So we're gonna put you in the hands of Brother Walter, <laughs> amen. And that's gonna be your class leader. Cynthia, I don't know where Cynthia is, but Cynthia, we're putting, Cynthia, we're putting her in, uh, Walter's class, all right? All right, and we'll get you read in. Uh, we'll do a little crash course in new members, and we'll get you read in at Pew Rally, all right? I, I gotta read in a couple of people at Pew Rally, so you, you're all straight. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for one more soldier, one more soul, one more who has united themselves with this and we don't take it lightly that you continue to send workers for the vineyard. And so, God, we ask that you fill Sister Mary up with your Holy Spirit. We know that she uh, is a believer. We, we know that she knows you in the free pardoning of her sins. But now, God, we ask that you will just fill her up with your Holy Ghost and that you will reveal your plans for her life in this new season as a member of St. James. Lord, thank you for this family who has come to surround her and to encourage her in our faith. And, and even though she's related to all of them, uh, we thank you that this is a family that prays together and worships together and, and serves together. Lord, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We know that you will supply all of her needs according to your riches and glory. And we just believe that it is done in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. Come on, it's all right to say amen again. Come on, give Sister Mary a hug. Come on, you could do better than that. Let's welcome Sister Mary. All right, amen, amen, amen. And 
But you know, there's still time if you want to be a part of the family of God. Even though this invitation moment has ended, you can still meet me at the back and say, Pastor, I want to be a part of this fellowship. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me, you brought me from a mighty, amen. Brother Pastor, I present to you these persons to be received into full membership in the stewardess board of this church. Have these... Oh. Patricia Kelly, let me turn around and face the pastor. Michelle Smith Brown, Phil Steen Hale, Barbara Banks. Amen. Amen. Have these persons served their probation well and been diligent and reverent in the performance of their duties? They have. Have they shown by their own personal devotion and regular worship that they are fit persons for this great privilege? They have. What is your wish? Do you promise to serve faithfully and devoutly in all, in any and all of your duties as a member of the stewardess board? Do you promise to do your best to fulfill all of your obligations as a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and as a communicant member of this church? Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, who did accept the ministry of faithful women during thy earthly life, we pray thee to accept and bless the work which these women are about to undertake in the care of thy house and worship thy word and holy sacraments and preserve in purity and holiness their souls and bodies as living temples of thy presence to whom with the Father and the Holy Spirit we give praise and honor now and forever. Lord, we beseech thee, grant us grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow thee. Our God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. As you prepare, to, before you put on the, the door, I want to ask that you kneel, if you're able, if you're able to kneel, if you can kneel. And I will say to each one as you put your, as you put the doily on their head. Sister Patricia Kelly, I welcome you and admit you into full membership of the stewardess board of this church. May God ever bless you. Sister Michelle Smith, I welcome you 
and admits you into full membership of the Stewardess Board of St. James AME Church. May God bless you and the Lord keep you. Sister Fieldstein Hale, I welcome you and admit you <clears throat> into full membership of the Stewardess Board at St. James AME Church. May the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And Sister Barbara Banks, we welcome you and admit you as a stewardess at St. James AME Church. May the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen and amen. You may rise and face the congregation. These are the women who care for our altar, who dress it every Sunday, who prepare our communion elements, and reverently serve the household of faith. Come on, let's celebrate them. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, they, and now that they are fully admitted as stewardesses at St. James AME Church, they can now fully discharge their duties as we now move to our communion service and sing together hymn 321. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. We will sing stanzas one, two, and four. Won't you stand as we sing hymn 321? trembling soul.
near the cross, I'll watch and wait. Near the cross. you may be seated you may turn to 798 to follow along with the holy communion you that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of god and walking from henceforth in his holy ways draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort by making a humble confession to almighty god let us recite the general confession together Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and be well our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and nation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of our Lord. And through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is to always have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who have you turned to mercy to give your only son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And it instituted in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O oh merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, 
eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink all of this, all of you. For this is the cup of my blood in the New Testament, shed for you and for all, for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. As you gather your communion elements, we first invite you to take the bread. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. May it preserve you body and soul unto everlasting life. Take it in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. You may take the bread now. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is the flow that makes me cleaner than snow. No other fount we know but the blood of Jesus. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take it with thanksgiving in your heart, knowing that the blood still works and it will never lose its power. You may take the wine, the juice, Together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Glory to God on high and peace to his people on earth. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee for thy great glory. We give thanks to you, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You who takes away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You who sits at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are holy. You alone are the Lord. You alone, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, are the most high to the glory of God the Father. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen. Won't you stand all over the church? After supper they sang a hymn, What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Greet your neighbors, give them a holy hug. Tell your neighbor, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it.
Sebastian. getting ready to go, we, uh, we want to remind you that immediately after this service, go, go take a partake in the first of our Pew Rally Month challenges, yes. the puzzle challenge, get with your teams and figure out that puzzle. Let's accept the challenge, because God, because you can do all things, amen. amen, through Christ who gives you strength. Also, uh, Mariah, uh, Mariah Powell, raise your hand, Mariah. If you have young people who are interested in singing uh, and would like to be a part of our youth choir and children's choir, please see Mariah. Where are you going to be, Mariah? Uh, Mariah will be in the annex next to the Pew Rally tables, your team tables. Um, please sign up with her so that we can have a robust uh, youth singing ministry. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you again for coming. We pray that God has blessed you in a special way. Let's grab in each other's hands, reach across the aisles. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hang on in there. No matter the challenges, no matter the obstacles, just hang on in there. Because you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. May the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. And the children of God sang with one uplifted voice. Amen, amen, and amen. Love it, serve the Lord.